That's kind of cool. It's kind of inconvenient, but kind of cool. Hello team! What team? Wildcats. Uh, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be making some clothes. <laughs> Shocking. Uh, I've been really busy with sort of these big costume builds, which I hope you've seen on this channel. If not, I'll link them down below. But one of the things that I really focused on last year and the year before was making stuff for my wardrobe because those are things that we wear every day and we've had a couple of good weeks here in Scotland and uh, <laughs> going outside do you ever like do you ever like put on clothes and then just feel like like what you see isn't what you want to see <laughs> I'm sure we've all felt like that but I found that changing your clothes really helps and I have lots of I'm the kind of person that doesn't throw anything away unless it's like properly broken <laughs> So I have a lot of old clothes that I don't really wear anymore, but also that I do wear, but that I do wear, but they don't really, I just wear them because they're clothes. They don't make me feel good, <laughs> basically. I don't know if this makes any sense. Basically, I want to feel good. And for that reason, I'm going to make clothes. Works. So what I've found is that I have vintage inspired pieces make me feel a lot better. I've also found that uh, I don't like any pants slash trousers when I'm trying to buy them and so I can't make them because they're so hard I mean if you feel like they're not hard then good for you but <laughs> I find them really hard to make uh, so the logical alternative is obviously to make a thousand skirts right uh, so you might have seen my video it's quite old now I think but it's something like vintage inspired cycle skirt whatever that skirt I've worn basically like once a week minimum since I've made it. It's so comfy, it's so swooshy, it's just perfect. I love it so much. And so, more, I need more. So today we'll be making a skirt and a blouse. Uh, Hello guys, it's the editing cat over here. I just wanted to let you know that uh, we are not in fact making two items, we are making one item because the second item, the skirt, got irrevocably delayed and will be in next week's video. Now, I did mention that we were having good weather here and, you know, as I'm sitting down to make these more springtime clothes, it's obviously changed completely <laughs> and it's now raining. But whatever, I'm still gonna make them. See, it's murky outside. But if you're ever feeling down, I highly recommend getting some flowers. Look at these! I grew these from seeds. It's freaking amazing! I love them so much. Um, I think it'll be really nice to focus on small items. And the other thing I want to do is to not put so much pressure on myself because with historical clothing, you just, I just feel so pressured to make everything perfect and, you know, as accurate as possible and make everything super me, you know? The blouse is gonna, is gonna be based on a pattern that I already have and it's a little bit a peasant blouse style. So let's go over to fabrics and design, I guess. Also, I've been trying to make my background as aesthetic as possible, but maybe I've overdone it now and it's just too crowded, but I love it. <sighs> okay, I always have to fudge these angles because the light is from this window only and so, yeah, my background is messy. <laughs> anyway, let's go over to design. So, two items. They're not really, you know, interesting original designs, but they should be cute and that is that's important too, right? So we're going to be starting with the blouse, which is this Vogue pattern. I can't remember when or where I got this. Uh, I just, I usually just collect um, vintage patterns whenever I can, whenever they show up because I like them and I usually eventually use them. <laughs> so this was perfect for the style I wanted. You can see it's just a really simple gathered at around the shoulders. So I'm gonna be making this version uh, off the shoulder with long sleeves. Now, this is a size 34 bust, 37 hip. I'm not sure why the hip matters, but the bust is definitely too small for me. I am a 38 inch bust, which means I have to add to this, but depending on what the pattern, I've never actually opened the pattern. So we'll go and I hope all the pieces are there. Huh. Uh, yeah, anyway. 
And so the fabric for that I've actually had for a really long time. I've had it for... Do you guys remember when I made my Gary Baldi blouse? <laughs> this was meant to be part of that project when I made a few different blouses for my wardrobe and that was ages ago. I'll link that video up and down below. But I got this fabric at the same time. It's a really simple uh, cotton, white cotton just to... but it looks like linen. It's a linen look cotton. And this was pretty affordable. It was like six pounds a meter or something and I got two. That's all you really need for this shirt. Uh, you also need elastic, I think. You need a bit of elastic, uh, but I have that in my um, stash anyway. And we're going to be starting with the blouse simply because I've actually pre-washed this fabric. <laughs> I pre-washed it when I bought it, so that's good. But um, I don't always pre-wash my fabric, but for elements from my wardrobe, they will need to be washed in the machine. And with like these types of fabrics, they will hold up to machine wash. So if you pre-wash them, it means they won't shrink after you've made it. Uh, so I've definitely, and that's happened to me before, so I learned, I learned that the hard way. But yeah, so this is pre-washed and that's why we'll be starting with that. I'm not even writing any stuff down for this because I think it'll be super straightforward, really. It's just gathered, like it should be really easy. I'm not even gonna make a mock-up. <sighs> I know. Crazy, I'm not gonna make a mug up for either of these things. I mean, they lose fit, they lose fit. Come on. Oh, it has like a little stamp with the date. It says 1958. That's cool. Historicism in the 50s. We love it. So we have the instructions. Excellent. I, to be honest, if you follow me on here, I often don't follow the instructions just because sometimes they don't make sense to me. <laughs> but I do really like the look of vintage instructions though. They like have such nice illustrations. Amazing. Okay, um, I'm gonna read that later, basically. <laughs> Lots. So if you haven't used the vintage patterns before, um, they're not printed. They literally just cut to the one size that says on the envelope. It's not multiple sizes usually. And then any markings like notches, darts, stuff like that, is made up of these perforations. So having the instructions is kind of essential so you know what's going on. If you have like really scrunched up pieces, what you can do, which is what I'm going to be doing in a minute, but off camera because it's boring, is I'm going to set my iron to the lowest level and then I'm going to iron out these creases. Simple. Okay. Oh, this is nice. So this one actually says they're in perforations. I don't know if you can see it. It says back. So there's only three pattern pieces in this pattern. And they're all really simple. So there's, oh no wait, that's four. Five. Oh, I'm lying. <laughs> what am I even on about? So we have sleeve, nice. It says sleeve very clearly on it. Oh, that looks quite small. Hmm. Yeah, I'll probably have to adjust the sleeve as well. And what is this? Cuff? Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. And then, what is this final one then? Oh, front. What is this then? Okay. Hmm, interesting. What is this pattern sleeve? Where is this pattern? Back, front, sleeve, and cuff. Oh, is it a two-part sleeve? Is it? Oh! I see. Okay, this makes sense now. Someone's actually used this pattern. That's kind of cool. It's kind of inconvenient, but kind of cool. So the sleeve pattern is actually meant to be these two pieces together. But if you want to make the, the other shirt with the short sleeve, you're meant to cut off a bit of a pattern so that it's... Oh, shit. Well, basically, like, okay. Lots of people that use vintage patterns uh, recommend, like, tracing the pattern so that you don't, like that you're like preserving it and stuff. But I'll just straight up say that tracing patterns is the bane of my existence. I hate it. I think it's a waste of time for me, for me personally. It's a waste of my time. It takes forever. And my back always hurts at the end because I'm an old lady. And yeah, basically I don't like it. So I don't trace my patterns. I'm always really careful with my vintage patterns so that I'm not like cutting through it or anything, but I don't trace them and I'm not gonna stop now. <laughs> I'm not going to tape them together, I'm just going to pin them on the fabric together. Yeah, that's a better way to do it. I don't want to put sticky tape on it because that feels a bit weird. So I'm just going to iron them so that you can see them better and come back in a second. 
Okay, so I've heard the price pattern pieces. I've had a quick look at the instructions. It looks like it'll be pretty straightforward. So this is, it's basically a rectangle with a little dip here, which is for the arm curve. And it is across the bust here is uh, 14 inches. This is for a 34 inch bust, but because it's a loose fitting garment, there's a lot of ease built into it. Because I need to add to it, I'm just gonna straight up add one inch to all side seams. Done. Where is the center front? Yeah, I'll add one inch to the center front and the center back, which is cut on the fold, so super easy. And the, another thing about this pattern that is really nice is no zippers. I don't know if anyone else hates zippers like I do. Like I can do them, but if I don't have to, so much for the better. Anyway, the front looks nearly identical to the back. The only difference is that it's about an inch longer at the center front. Yeah, otherwise they're identical. The sleeve is probably the oddest sleeve pattern I've ever seen, but because this is an off the shoulder thing, the setting end of the sleeve is different. So the sleeve also looks like a rectangle basically. Uh, flared out and then it has uh, like the dip as well. I'm going to add to the sleeve as well. I'm going to add two inches to each because I want really full sleeves and I obviously have bigger arms than whatever this was made for. But yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. And I'm looking at the instructions. You basically just sew all the pieces together. You uh, There's some tucks actually at the bottom, at the waist of the front and the back. And then you just turn down the uh, neckline to make a, a casing and then you feed the elastic through it. Oh, and then you add the sleeves and do the cuts, you know. Uh, yeah, so I'll just, I'll check in in a little bit to show you how far I've gotten. I think I'm just gonna cut my fabric now. Do you guys ever skip a, st skip a step and then think, damn, I should have just done that? I do that a lot. <laughs> Basically, I should have ironed this fabric, um, but I didn't. Why, you ask? Because I'm lazy. But now I've marked all of the, like, um, the markings with the heat erasable pen. <laughs> so I'm not gonna iron it now. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? So the first step that the pattern tells you to do is to uh, sew these tucks. Uh, I'm not sure why the tucks are here. I guess it's so you don't have to gather the bottom, but you still sort of control that fullness, I guess. I'm going to sew them in. I'm going to do it with quite a large stitch because um, once I try it on, if I don't like it, I'll just rip, rip them out. Update time. Uh, so I set the tucks and I pressed them. They look good. Interesting. And I think if I can just show you. This is the inside here. You can see the tucks. There's two on each side of the center and the center front and the center back. And then I just pinned on the sleeves. And the sleeves is really weird. So I thought I'd just show you so you guys can sort of understand. Um, this is the kind of moment that makes me question like 
why are we doing things this way? Why are the instructions this way? Why? But you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I mean, 1950s Vogue can't be wrong, right? Uh, so basically I've pinned the sleeve on to the front and the back right sides together but you might notice that the side seams of either bits aren't done so it's just pinned literally like this and it kind of forms a circle along the neckline I hope that makes any sense so it's just pinned along the armhole curve but it's open on both ends and what they tell you to do is sew this and then press it finish it I guess and then you can just sew up the side seam of the actual blouse into the arm and sew the, the, the sleeve side seam also all in one go. I don't know, I'm gonna try it and then I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. So, progress has been made. This is the blouse as it stands. It doesn't look like much, I'll be honest. But you can kind of tell where it's going, right? Yeah. So, and then, so I sewed like they said, I sewed the sleeve in here first and then I did a seam through the sleeve all the way across to the actual side of the bodice. And you know what? It looks okay. The only thing I'm concerned about is how I'm going to finish these seams. I'd rather do it by machine just so it's, you know, stronger and quicker. But these, are cool. these, are, these seams are quite hard to get to. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim back the seam allowances and then so here, you can see, I'll trim both of them back and then fold this one over the top of the trimmed one and just sew it down like that so it encases it. So I'm just going to finish the seams and then I think the next step is actually to do the casing at the top. So for the casing, they just tell you to turn it in. I'm going to do it twice so it's like a finished edge and I'm going to sew it down. So things I've done was I flat filled all of the seams by machine. It actually went pretty well because this is such a loose fitting garment and it's so large. You can sort of scrunch up as you're pushing it under the machine and you can see there. Yeah, it's a pretty clean finish if you can see there. And so I think it works really well. Um, I'm really happy with that. Pretty strong. I actually didn't follow their instructions quite like they said. So I went to my uh, iron and I folded uh, a five, the 5 eight seam allowance at the top and press it really nicely and then I folded the edge again just to meet it. So this is about 3 8 kind of hem on here. Yeah, about 3 is 3 8 And then, then I just do, did one row of machine sewing there and then one again at the top, which is top stitching it to create this channel. And they tell you to unpick a little bit of the seam to so you can put the elastic in. But all I did is, was at the centre back, I just didn't sew for like an inch, just there. I thought it was easier than um, picking a seam, so I'll just put in the elastic and then like hand sew it down or something. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now, is get the elastic. So the instructions actually, actually tell you to cut uh, the elastic to be 36 inches long. 32, sorry, 32 inches long for this for size 16. But as we mentioned, I mentioned, and we know now, I am not a size 16. I'm probably a size bigger. I'm not sure by how much to make this bigger. But if the bus is 32, if 34 and it's a 32 inch elastic, it's your shoulder measurement, isn't it? But the elastic stretches, I think that's the whole point, isn't it? I don't want it to be too tight, so it's 46. You know what, I'm gonna add, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add four inches to the elastic because that's why I added to the bust anyway. And then what you have to do is you overlap the edges by half an inch and you sew it down really securely and then you slid it back in. But then if I try it on and I find that the elastic is too loose, I can take it in there 
and just keep trying trial and error. <laughs> That's what we do here anyway. Report back in a couple minutes. So I have stitched the uh, elastic together, so it's just one loop now, and I tried it on, uh, I had to tighten it after adding that extra bit of elastic, so here we are. Uh, the next step that they tell me to do is to actually finish the sleeve uh, cuffs, that's really the only thing left. They have a pretty complicated method for this in the pattern, so they suggest, so they have this cuff pattern piece and then the, you've got a, a a marked slash and then you're meant to sew a facing onto the slash and then cut the slash and then you're meant to gather the bottom of the sleeve and then you're meant to add the cuff, make a button, haul it out a button and that just seems like so much effort. <laughs> so what I think I'm gonna do is do the exact same thing, same thing I did on the neckline and just use a little bit of elastic for the cuffs as well. Or would it be cuter with actual cuffs rather than, you know what I mean? Like it would have an actual cuff rather than just, rather than just the gathered edge. This is the thing about going off patterns that you have to make design decisions and I'm very indecisive. Okay, let's, I think a cuff would be really cute actually, but but if I make it an elastic, I can wear it like further up. I can make it into a three quarter sleeve if I wanted to. I can push them up really easily. We're going with elastic. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I already did on this video. So I'm just gonna show you the end result.